Hi everyone! I hope you've been enjoying learning about how different types of clothing gets made so far this week. I know some of you talked about how people in your family know how to make clothes. Some of them sew, um, and some people said that they have people in their family who know how to knit. That's what we're going to be learning about in this story. But this is not a story that's going to teach us about knitting. This is a fiction story, but the character in it knits. And when someone knits, they usually have two very long knitting needles and some yarn, and the needles help them make certain loops and knots together so that they can make it into something like a sweater or a hat. And so you'll see that a little bit in this book. But if you have someone in your family who knows how to knit, maybe you could ask them to show you exactly what it looks like, and that might be a fun thing to see too. The story we're reading is called The Magic Ball of Wool. This is by Susanna Isern and Nora Hilde. The Magic Ball of Wool. The story goes that one night in the forest near dawn, a large ball of wool appeared floating in the air. Light as a balloon, the ball of wool floated through the hedgehog's window. It was so quiet that when it got stuck on his prickles, the little creature didn't even stir. At sunrise, the spider on the doorknob, who woke up very early so that she could get her web ready, saw the mysterious ball of wool stuck on the hedgehog's back. Her friend was still snoring away merrily. Wake up, hedgehog, shouted the spider in a frightened voice. What's up? asked the hedgehog, curling himself into a ball. You've got a great big ball of wool stuck on your prickles. Can't you feel it? The hedgehog, who was quite used to shaking things out of his prickles, turned around in his bed and the ball of wool fell off. He looked at it with surprise and said, What could I do with this ball of wool? Well, wool is for knitting scarves, mittens, or sweaters, answered the spider from her web. If you like, I can teach you. The hedgehog plucked out two of his longest prickles to use as knitting needles, and the spider, who was an expert, taught him how to knit. Soon, all of the forest animals heard about the mysterious arrival of the ball of wool, and so, one by one, and full of curiosity, do you know what curiosity means? It means you're curious and you want to see or know something. So, one by one, and full of curiosity, they came to see what was happening in the hedgehog's house. The first creature who came along was the mouse. Seeing the hedgehog enthusiastically knitting away, he said, Good morning, hedgehog. I came to see you and your ball of wool. Could you knit something for me? Of course I could, little mouse. I'll knit you a sweater. Clickety-click, clickety-click, a stitch here, a stitch there. The hedgehog knitted a tiny sweater. But just as he finished, something magical happened. The woolen sweater turned into a great big ball of cheese. The mouse was overjoyed. He loved cheese more than anything else in the world. The next visitor was the frog. Clickety-click, clickety-click, a stitch here, a stitch there. The hedgehog knitted some fancy mittens for the frog. But just as he finished, something amazing happened. The woolen mittens turned into a gleaming mirror. The frog was delighted. Delighted means really happy. The frog was delighted. As she was very vain, she'd always dreamed of having a mirror in which she could look at herself all day long. So she's vain, that means she cares a lot about how she looks and things like that. So she likes to have a mirror to look at herself. His next visitor was the bear. Clickety-click, clickety-click, a stitch here, a stitch there. The hedgehog knitted a great big balaclava. A balaclava kind of can look like this. It's sort of like a hat, but it covers even more of your face and goes down your neck. Kind of like if you've ever seen a ski mask. It would be similar to that. So the hedgehog knitted a great big balaclava complete with a hole for his friend's snout, but the cap turned into a shell in which the bear could hear the sea. So what do you notice happening each time the hedgehog knits something for a friend? What happens to it? Then along came the centipede. Clickety-click, clickety-click, a stitch here, a stitch there. 
This time the hedgehog patiently knitted 100 socks, which turned into 100 pairs of brightly colored castanets that entertained the centipede for hours. Have you ever used those maybe in music class? It's a type of um, instrument. And when you push the two parts together, they make a nice sound. Then along came the snail. Clickety-click, clickety-click, a stitch here, a stitch there. The hedgehog knitted a scarf that covered the snail's shell, but it turned into a tiny scooter that could take him wherever he was going much faster than he'd ever dreamed possible. And so all of the animals in the forest got whatever they wanted most in the world from the hedgehog and his magic ball of wool. One afternoon, a crab knocked on the hedgehog's door. He, hiked, he had hiked through three forests and climbed two mountains to find him. Hello, hedgehog. They say you've got a ball of wool and can knit things. I've come a long, long way to ask you for a strong, long rope, said the crab, exhausted after his journey. Has something happened? asked the hedgehog, concerned by the crab's visit. A huge blue whale has got stuck on the beach, explained the worried crab. He weighs more than 200 tons, and we can't move him. If he doesn't get back in the water soon... The crab doesn't finish the sentence, but what do you think would happen if a whale is stuck on the beach and can't get back into the water soon? Why do you think the crab and the other animals are so worried? I know that whales usually need to be in the water so that they can eat and then they can um, get what they need from the water. Do you think that a whale would survive very long on the beach? Probably not. The hedgehog ran off to get his two knitting prickles and the ball of wool, but all he found was a tiny piece no longer than an ant. If it's a piece that's not longer than an ant, is that very long or is it short? I know an ant is very short. Do you think he can make a very long, strong rope out of a piece that small? The magic ball of wool had run out. The crab returned to the beach with empty claws. The hedgehog was so upset he couldn't sleep at all. He just kept thinking about the poor blue whale who'd got stuck on the beach. News traveled fast in the forest. It was carried on the wind and with the birds and the bees. And in the same way the animals had found out about the arrival of the ball of wool, they immediately heard the sad story of the whale. So that night, one by one, they left the things they loved most of all outside the hedgehog's door. A big ball of cheese, now slightly nibbled, a shiny mirror, a hundred pairs of brightly colored castanets, a shell in which the sea crashed, and an itty bitty scooter. In the morning, the hedgehog saw that all of the wishes had been returned and he understood what he had to do. The forest animals had given up their presents to help save the blue whale. All he had to do was pull the thread from each of them and he would have the whole ball of wool once again. With the ball of wool stuck on his back, the hedgehog hiked through three forests and climbed two mountains until he came to the sea and found the blue whale sobbing on the sand. Clickety-click, clickety-click, a stitch here, a stitch there. The hedgehog knitted a long, strong rope, but just as he finished, something amazing and magical happened. The woolen rope turned into a gigantic butterfly. Hmm, make a prediction for a minute. Do you think that the butterfly will be able to save the blue whale? Or do you think it would have been better if it had stayed as a long, strong rope? If you think the butterfly will save it, do you have any guess of how it's going to do that? Let's see. The beautiful butterfly's flapping wings surrounded the hedgehog and the marine animals in a sea breeze full of hope. It opened its wings wide, wrapped them around the blue whale, and returned it to the salty water. Each and every one of the creatures on the beach, in the water and in the air who saw this amazing sight joined the forest animals in discovering that the magic ball of wool that, that the ball of wool was truly magical. They say that late one night, close to dawn, an enormous magical ball of wool had turned into a butterfly that turned into a butterfly that flew through the sky in the forest. Where it went is another mystery. The end. 
I hope you have a great rest of your day. If you get a chance to see someone you know knitting, I hope that you will tell us all about it. It can be a fun thing to watch someone use those knitting needles with their yarn. I hope that we'll get to see you all together soon. Thank you for joining so many Zoom calls with us. We love being able to see you. Take care.